what that means to the community and the people and how they can be of benefit uh, using the product. So that is what I believe in always. So maybe uh, looking forward to present the doll uh, through your interviews. David, Web Nexus started out very tiny. And just a quick recap from last week, you started with two people and now you have effectively hundreds in your team and deliver a whole range of platforms and solutions from e-commerce to video streaming and loads of things in between. And we spoke quite a lot about that journey in the development of WebNexus. And so this week I wanted to actually focus on one of those product platform deliveries and that is e-commerce. And um, I know from talking to you and um, trolling through the internet looking for information so that I could understand, so that I could ask reasonably intelligent uh, questions of you. But e-commerce is a big thing, isn't it, David? So what is, for the audience, what's e-commerce? What's this defined as? Yeah, uh, so e-commerce, as you said, like it is, it's it's a great inter- I mean, get great innovation, like which has happened in the last uh, decade, uh, which has gained a lot of momentum in the last decade, probably, mm-hmm. which was like started around 1994, 97, when the internet was born. So people started thinking out like, how do we do something on the internet, like the mm-hmm. commerce, I mean, back then, it was not like a whole lot of things uh, happening on the internet. But then like, um i'm 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 from a different country you're from a different country now so yes. this internet has uh, shortened the gap that we are living now and uh, this has literally made people to buy anything from the us from the australian region from india from china wherever they wanted so that is like um i may have a shop here the retail shop physical shop here but if i'm just using the internet and putting a medium like to transact for the people and showcase like what i have in my store so make, moving the commerce of the physical uh, retail store to uh, mm. electronic online. medium, the, yeah, on, uh, online or an electronic medium is what um, exactly called as e-commerce. So it is like electronic commerce, as as we say, like that is what I, I believe it, it should be as termed as e-commerce by the gurus who has termed the terminology <laughs> back there. <laughs> Effectively, uh, it's just buying and selling online, online or over online. the internet. Over the and I was reading um, and doing some research and there by 2025, there will be 2.56 billion digital buyers. So it's what? massive, isn't it, David? Yeah, so the world, I uh, mean, uh, the physical uh, conversation which is happening is getting shortened and people are just looking for w- different ways to um, buy things that they want. For example, if you are sitting, I mean, right now we are doing this conversation, but we for this, we might need a lot of uh, equipment. We might need a microphone. We might need a light. Mm. So I believe like you and I would have got that online. I, we would not have had, uh, gone to a store to check how that is looking like, a feeling like, we just simply put our trust on Amazon or maybe the, uh, the other source, yeah. which is there. And then we would have purchased that to facilitate our uh, our, our schedule going, schedule going on a bus- busy day. So it's like definitely, I mean, I, I was not, not a fan of like buying things online, but, but if you can say like five, seven years back. Uh, yes. But today, every single transaction is happening on the internet and it is e-commerce. So even if I buy a light a tube a light for my home or for, for the office yeah food, groceries everything yeah everything furniture. is automated yes everything is automated everything is on a subscription list and of course like uh if i put that scuff subscription on the e-commerce store they bring me every day morning and even for the retail shop that i own like i have a retail shop as yeah. i told you but when uh even for that shop uh, we buy groceries every day morning from an e-commerce store yeah. So we, I don't go there, pick up the things and put that in my shop. Like I don't have that really that time to do that. That Those guys who are working in the shop, they just collect that from the truck it driver, which we order. It saves e-commerce. time. I must confess that I now longer, no longer go very often into physical places to shop. If I want yeah. something, 
I'll research it online and buy it online nine and a half times out of 10 because that's just the, the variety. Like I don't have to mm -hmm. physically go to 10 shops to find the particular thing that I want. I can yeah, go and look at 10 online yeah. shops without leaving my office and yes. find the bright, best price and yeah. find the best deal and buy it online and have it delivered. David, do you think that business owners and companies realize that um, the importance of having e-commerce platforms? Because it's not just about goods, it's also about services and apps and platforms and all sorts of things, isn't it? Yeah, actually, like um, there are different, I mean, uh, for this, let me go bit to a bit of, uh, uh, do, a, uh, do a small bit of background yeah. to you. Um, yes. So sales as a matter of sales, like, I mean, when we talk about sales, the business owner have, who wants to improve their sales, they definitely want to market that. But retaining the people should be uh, the critical thing. Like, for example, if somebody, so if, if they found you, like you found somebody and you are transacting with them for the first time and then the second time you want some convenience from them, like they want to be mm. in a channel that you like. So it would yes. be... It would be like it can be a mobile app, it can be a uh, it can be a, a, a web application, it can be an iOS application, Apple app application. So if they are there in different mediums, mm -hmm. the chances of uh, increasing the uh, revenue would be for each device, each interface. Like for example, if this is going to be yes. a screen. It increases for, for if I'm on my laptop, if the if the website is good on the laptop, my chance of increasing the sales would be at least going by two to five percentage, which is like huge for the same amount yes. of marketing you put in. Like, for example, if you put ten dollars inside, mm -hmm. um, you might get two times or five times uh, five five percentage more in more in sales if your website is good on the uh, computer. And if you have a, a, a phone app, which is yes. an Android app or an iPhone app or on windows app so that goes by percentages like one percentage 1.5 percentage so that's that's how most of the sales and in the amazon if you take the strategy of amazon the global yeah. giant so the most of their sales like over over 50 to 60 percentage of the retail sales just comes from the app because they have that much of things ah. yeah they they because, because when i i for, for example like normally mm -hmm. people the executives who are working in an office they don't go and log in their computer with their Amazon accounts, Amazon accounts. So they, they just take their mobile phone in the hand. Yes. Like they would have already logged in. They would have got their accounts. Simply swipe through the products, put that in the basket and make an order. I mean, just put a COD cash on delivery and then they simply buy mm -hmm. it out. So it is like mobile app is so critical for that kind of companies. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, back like 2005, uh, 15, I, I remember like there was a company in India which really completely shut down their web. Uh, and they just wanted to focus on the mobile app. So whatever the traffic is coming from the mobile browser, they just wanted them to push that to the mobile app, make them install the mobile app, use the mobile app because they see that mobile app is so potential in improving the sales. So uh, here, like as you told, like business owners, like um, are really uh, uh, should be really thinking about all these things, like critically evaluating, like what mediums drive them, uh, what percentage of sales, because every hundred dollars spent in marketing advertising or uh, maybe like uh, pushing the product to the people should bring in the maximum return on investment for the product because mm -hmm. like when i advertise like as a business owner when i advertise normally if i put in like uh 500 this month i should be at least able to get 1500 back 1500 so that is the game that business owners would normally think about so if if it is going to be giving you 30 three times the investment so obviously you are in profit so you don't mind putting yes. five, 500 five hundred thousand dollars inside that exactly so, so what are those critical features that we have to think on so that there are a lot of things then we, we can go on like step by step you please uh take it over yeah so, yes, David. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, it's a, it's a really good conversation. So, what I gleaned from that is that businesses and companies that have uh, sales as as part of what they do should be considering um, a mobile app and or very <laughs> much the applicability of what they sell and what they do in terms of a mobile app because that's where most people are going to be looking for things they're swiping on their phone they're google searching for things so their mobile app is a key component of of that whole e-commerce discussion isn't it 
Yeah, because like uh, when you're sitting, I mean, I'm working here, like I might go out, uh, I may drive my car, but I don't carry my la a computer or my laptop. Yeah. I cannot open that. But but when I'm driving, I have a signal. Yeah, my phone is always with me. The phone, I can I can open the phone and my signal, like where I'm in the signal. Maybe if it's two two minute signal, I can if I'm thinking something, I can just take it up and go to that particular e-commerce store or turn on the uh, application. In just next five thirty seconds, I can put an order. Yes. Get get back like so that increases the sale percentage. It it you all you need is just two minutes, less than two minutes to make a sale. Get um, put an order uh, to the store. So. In that idea, I mean, with that idea or that perspective, I think the mobile app is critical for uh, this uh, solution. But otherwise, again, uh, like there is another side of this as well. Like if mm -hmm. uh, as a business, like we wanted to be on uh, business owners, like uh, the people who are ordering for their companies or the corporations, like corporates would want a web application because they wanted to put some big on that on a big screen. So there, these are two different sides of the people. Like yes. one is the working, working executives, working executives want to be on mobile phone they, they always love to be on the mobile they swipe up swipe up and all the time they just swipe it up uh, yes. now the swiping up is coming up as a fashion and people <laughs> always swipe up the thumb just works all the time <laughs> so it's, it's just like that so well when we capture that swipe up moment in the e-commerce yeah. app so it's like there's at some point they get uh, you get an order Yes, absolutely. David, I just want to touch back on something that you said before about um, a return on investment in terms of um, part of what WebNexus does around e-commerce and the services that you provide in promoting and advertising businesses and their products or services. And you said you talked about um, if you invest five hundred dollars, you want to make sure that you get a thousand dollars in sales in return. Is this realistic expectation in this day and age? Uh, yeah, uh, actually going digital, let me say like uh, you mm -hmm. can store in your store, uh, but there are like when you go digital, when I speak about the global digital phenomena, like it's about the idea like it's about the idea yes. how do you how do you mean i i might have an e-commerce store but i i and i might spend five hundred dollars or thousand dollars but if i don't have i mean put all my focus into the point where i do can i can get the sales yeah uh, I, that five hundred dollars would go away it's because when i started in 2016 like that time mm. period 18 approximately 18 four or five years back from now i started uh, an online uh, this uh, oil store oil store for my mm -hmm. wife so she I just tried my best to like how we can just with I, and the investment was around four hundred dollars yes. that's for a year that for a year the four hundred dollars investment for it was a for a year yeah I wanted to take take her business to the digital medium and uh, and right and the same year like we we took around like more than two thousand dollars up I mean that she was new to the business and uh, yes. Uh, the product has to be sourced. The uh, yes. marketing has to be learned. Yes. And has to do all these learnings. But I want to, make, as, a, as a digital marketer, I need to make sure, like, I don't want to spend too much of money because she's on the learning curve. Mm -hmm. But then the return on investment has to be also guaranteed. So uh, there are there are several mediums, several marketplaces where we can just uh, put the uh, the first investment and then connect that to the e-commerce e store that we do uh, because. People have to come to the store. If we spend money yeah. on building the store, if the money is getting spent on building the store, store it has to be also equally distributed to uh, market the store. So yes. it, it is like it is not that like I I knew a store which is which has had like around seven products, and they had literally uh, over one hundred and fifty to two hundred orders running every single day. That's an eatable, by the way. And and yeah. so people that the order was flowing across. So if if we know like where that population is and where we can put the funds, like where that one dollar is getting spent, would we be able to get that one dollar converted mm. into like two dollars? Yes. That yeah. ideology, that ideology is what um, is so critical, so critical for an e-commerce store owner. We, we don't need hundreds of products. We don't need like it no, might be yeah. like one product, two product, or five maybe that's enough like oh um when we started we had just three products mm -hmm. but then we were able to make 2000 and today the business is at least making uh two thousand dollars every month her business like she makes yes. as a housewife she's a housewife but yes. she does a more more than two thousand two thousand five hundred dollars in in her home like she shoots in the home so, i mean she uh, takes the phone up and then she attends some incoming calls 
and then like uh, she ships the oil she has got some two yeah. uh, few few employees like uh, seven to ten employees out there for her this thing so then they were they were that's that's and like the expansion is happening in that direction so all these were like if we were like opening an e-commerce store and we were just um, thinking that the sales would come it would never come but 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 uh that combination exam- yeah. of marketing yeah. investing right. in an e-commerce platform combined yeah. with good marketing, marketing and yeah. then there should be flow of sales because there's enough online buyers out there to support yeah. millions of businesses yeah. across the globe yeah yes true and then the cut through like if we are there in the market we have to be also able to cut through the uh, existing competition that's one thing the one, yeah uh, and the noise is out there because people the attention scarcity is too much on the internet today like people doesn't even have uh, i mean I, we you know we cannot expect attention over 20 seconds maximum that's the thing i so, know yeah, 20 seconds scarcity. is that's not long 20 <laughs> yeah, seconds is but... not long yeah, but there's no attention. Like nobody is really, literally interested in listening to a long, longer thing or uh, work sitting on the internet and uh, doing something. So if we are able to capture that in the twenty twenty seconds and then like grab that moment, then the business is going to succeed. So that's uh, one thing that again, like we can say, the e-commerce store owners has to be taken care of because um, mm-hmm. without that, t- that part of thing that is taken and combination of ideas, as you said, like, where do I put my dollar in? Like this dollar, where mm-hmm. this dollar, which I have, where do I put that in? Like uh, OTT product, I mean, with the e-commerce product, probably which I made already, like when I invest like 500, I, I would be able to, the software, like I would be able to get at least 1,500 in that month of sales. So, and that would be added as a recurring for me. So recurring revenue would be just g- generated with that engine. Uh, so mm. it is like, how do you plan as a business um, owner and uh, where do you plan that? And uh, of course, like you have to invest a lot in the marketing, learn that like it doesn't come in day one because I mean, it it's hard. Oh. Of... <laughs> marketing is a hard game. <laughs> Yeah, it's hard, hard game, and like you have to be learning and learning and learning and all the time, all the time. Yeah, all the time. Like I'm lucky I had that. I learned it by when I was background. In, in Thirteen, yeah. Thir- I mean, I'm just thirty, thirty-five. So I just like with when you see, I mean, there are so many people who have learned that when they are learned that when they are in 65, 70, 80 year, yes. they have learned marketing. So yes. when we start, man. <laughs> So it's like the game, that game is learnable, anybody can do. And there are so many businesses that I work with today, this day, which is making over $500,000 in sales with, with simple uh, with simple marketing strategy. The marketing strategy is really, really simple. When, and and when it's coming to that, I mean, there are so, each of these businesses is unique. Like I, uh, 2018, I had some businesses which is like making uh, less than $100,000 today. They are over $500,000 to $600,000 a month they uh and then like um the, the other one is like uh there's a there is a omani oman based uh, grocery store they they were making around uh that that's that's making over a million dollars a year like uh, over half a yeah. year sorry half a year so all these like has said we can say like all these uh, has really shown like e-commerce has really the potential and this omani store was open not like 10 years back or five years back it was opened uh, three years back during the pandemic and mm. this guy was able to capture the attention of the people through advertisements across the street he doesn't he did not say like i want to go digitally to facebook and because he wanted to put that where the people are roaming in the streets mm-hmm. so i need to put my grocery store out there so I, he has put this website name in everywhere he has printed the flyers cards so so this is like where we how we and uh, how we can market the store so lots of like stores like what feature drives the sales like how do we how do the business owners drive the sales through what feature uh, which medium what product and uh, there, yes. there are so many of these things that we can definitely discuss going forward yeah david webnexus delivers e-commerce um, solutions for businesses and companies can you talk to us today about what the process is for someone comes to you and wants an e-commerce platform or solution can you walk me through that process with webnexus mm, yeah sure 
so um normally uh the process would be like uh the initial like definitely as everybody would do that it would be the identification uh like uh, why do they normally i i, I it's not like always i don't uh, um, uh, want everything to be like if i'm going to sell this sell ask you something like yeah. I, I would definitely want to want you to be like understanding how this works and like uh, would it suit your business requirements is that like mm -hmm. i mean the, the match has to be made like before we even sign up yes. so it's not it's not about making a sale so what i do normally is like i understand what market is that uh, they are operating in what is their product so get information about them how many products do they have are they an existing physical store uh, retailer are they do or are they just starting out now do they have the idea about marketing anywhere so how do they push that to the market so if they are pushing that to the market is that how is that possible at all like uh, do they have some idea education in the background because starting a store is really easy like we we can we can do the map, spinning up of the software that we have done and then we can deliver to the people but if they if uh, again i need to un help them understand like what that marketing means in their geography so we will do some research on the keywords like what is that mm -hmm. it is there so if their idea is unique and if there is no search, then maybe like it might take some time because inventions yes. are not recognized immediately. It, it has to be pumped yes. in with millions of dollars. You yes. have to put a lot of dollars into that invention and then show to the public and then get some attention. But uh, selling a product which is already hot, is it, it, it is really, really easier. For example, alcohol, if I say that is <laughs> really hot. Yes the 600 dollars store which i say like i work with now is like an alcohol store for the last five years mm -hmm. they were selling alcohol mm -hmm. every single month this online alcohol store sells alcohols from japan to the us and they sell over 600 dollars <sighs> every month yeah they sell japanese whiskeys or uh, uh, uh procure that from the distilleries originally and then mm -hmm. they ship that from japan to the us and distribute it to out, out there there are so many duplicates but these guys do it originally because they have offices in japan mm -hmm. and then they ship it to the us so like mm -hmm like these hot products like the products which people love people wanted to uh, use so that has to be understood identified uh with the business owners you have to ask them all these exploratory questions and before even you start opening up your software how does that look like because that doesn't matter to me david like if it, it, sorry to yeah. interrupt but in talking about oh. e-commerce and um sales of products um that also includes like delivery and shipping doesn't it yeah definitely yes it in, it includes logistics uh definitely uh it includes uh try you have to give where the logistics is at the moment so that tracking and everything has to be given properly to the users otherwise like when they are uh, when those informations are hidden your your support team is going to get bucked up with a lot of inquiries which yeah. is not not even a sales process which you don't make money on i mean <laughs> which we support but we you know, always like count on the things where you make money on as a business owner e-commerce owner so if 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 as an e-commerce owner we just worry about the support i mean definitely we have to worry about the support but otherwise yes. like the ones who uh, whom we had made us our client would just definitely flow away for they he will not come on the second sale and make a second sale with us um, but the percentage of our worry has to be more on the sales part of the business like if we are if mm -hmm. we are just focusing on our business 80 percentage of our time has to be assisted on the sales and how do we bring in the sales and uh, where do we focus on like cut that through and the support like okay we have a lot of uh, people uh, in the globe to support and our, i mean the business owners time and idea is so much valuable like we can outsource this support to people who are just making five dollars i mean asking five dollars an hour ten dollars an hour so that there are people but business owner time is not is definitely worth more than five dollars it's worth yeah. five hundred dollars an hour yeah because yeah. you when you spend when uh, even if you have work or if you don't have a work sit before the computer just think something put your music on the mild music on in your room create a good vibe and just sit on the computer gaze at mm. that um the idea would would just flow in like a waterfall just coming into you so i i i believe in that like when i'm just yes. dumped with i just uh, close my room put on a music like mild music and then yes. that brings in the concentration and then like when you start focusing on your to-do list and then see that you can see the gaps where where we have to fill in where we have to improve on and david yeah. that's 
part of your process is to actually understand that business, the yes. processes yes. that sit behind that business and then program and create the solution that's going to work for them. Yeah, definitely. So it's pretty yes. unique. Yeah, definitely. Because none of the things like... Um, and none of the things like that we have created here was looked on a competitor or a bit of fellow business people uh, who are developing uh, software and then created because I mean, of course, like uh, I, I, we would definitely would have uh, seen the names of the companies, but not even a single time uh, in so far in the last uh, few years, I have taken a demo of those competitors and see what they have got. It's not mm. my business because I don't make money with that. Like I cannot help my clients make money with that. If yeah. if I yeah. just focus on the competitor, I just have to focus on hundreds of them and then listen, yeah. and my time is getting wasted on that. So instead of that, listen to the, I mean, I just spend the money on marketing, listen to what the people have to say for the product. If there is something which is not there, like I note it on and then send it to the, send it to the tech team, ask them to build it out. And then like, when there's uh, the next inquiry asked, I say, yeah, that we have that uh, sort of feature here. And these are people driven softwares, like the softwares are driven by the people. So yes. the requirements come from the client. So when, yes. when hundreds yes. of requirements are put inside the software, so it your, gets your better software, and better. Yeah, better and better. So that's how we mature, nurture and uh, uh, deliver the solution. So the solution is a, the solution building is a part of like, uh, the maturation part process as how we build our neurons in the brain like we we mm. build we, we, we grow, grow our neurons like uh, listening getting gaining knowledge and tuning that up so same way the software is done that way we don't um, I don't recommend the team seeing a competitor like just go see what's best for the business of client ask them help them out support them Put that into the software. And I have to comment that um, David and his team are very... Um, now, there's, there's like a four and a half hour, five hour time difference between David and I. And so my team in Australia is starting work at eight, nine o'clock in the morning. David's team doesn't start until uh, lunchtime for us. But as soon as they're on, they're responding. We have a communication set up um, via Basecamp. And the team are communicating all the time. How do we do this? Can we fix that? Can we do it this way? Does it, can it look like this? And the team just automatically goes, does their work in the background and responds and goes, okay, can you test this and see if that's right? So it's a very, um, the team communicates really well and they're very responsive, um, particularly when you're building a platform and we are right in the midst of, of that now, although ours is mostly built, there's still just lots of little things. So that's, that's what happens when you build a unique solution for a business. You're building it specifically for them and it's not gonna look the same. There'll be similar elements, but it's not gonna look the same as everyone else's and that's the whole reason why you do what you do isn't it David that it, it needs to be specifically for them and their business and I have to say that WebNexus is very good at that portion of the work plus the programming plus the products so it's really a comprehensive you offer comprehensive solutions that um, and uh, David's held our hand in that process as well and it would be no difference for the e-commerce platform as well. David, when I was reading about e-commerce, there was this term that I'd never heard before, and I want you to explain it for the audience. It's called headless e-commerce. What on earth is that? <laughs> See, if you, have, would have asked, <laughs> if you would have asked that three years back to me, like, I was the theme. Like, I don't know yes. what the hell is that. What the heck was that happening there with headless? Like, what even does the headless mean? Yes. <laughs> I thought it was fantastic. I thought, Ron, I'm going to ask David about that. Okay. Uh, headless, like, means um, um, software, like, normally softwares are tied uh, together. Like, you, you yes. have a software. So the front end, which is the customer facing end, is tied up to the back end, and mm -hmm. the back end is tied up to the database. So yes. the database would be in a different programming language, which is MySQL. The backend would be on a different programming level language, which is Node.js. And the frontend would be on a different programming language, which is 
um vue.js ah. Vue vue.js or uh, react.js or angular.js and there are so many components that make up the front end <laughs> but people doesn't know that like we have just cemented all together so what happens in a headless system is like let we i mean we can just remove that e-commerce for now i'll just explain what is that headless in technical term means yes so headless would mean like if you are if you have cut off the front end of the computer customer facing end and you want to just use your back end and connect that mm -hmm. to a different front end. Like you say, you have seen a front end. Uh, that looks like example, this. Yeah, you 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 better feel, you felt that, oh, that was awesome. And I just want to purchase that and mm -hmm. implement that into this system. So yeah. can I do that? Yeah, with the headless systems, you can connect that through the APIs, access the, the programming inter, inter, interfaces, like programming uh, the, the points, the APIs is what we call that as. So APIs would communicate the information from the database, uh, from the back end to the front end. So when you have this uh, database, uh, so when you have this API connecting, even when you cut off this APIs, the back end would function. Normally, when ah. if there is a problem, if there is a problem in the front end, the back end will also go down. So you cannot access the ah. entire website. So you, if there is a problem in the front end, you, the entire thing would go down well, normally. Falls over. Yeah, falls over. So, but in a headless system, if the front end is gone, the front end is just gone. If the back end is gone, back end is just gone. It is, it is not going to affect the front end. So ah. is this independent? One thing functions without the aid of other. So that's even good for the, business, isn't it? So they can still yeah. be selling on the front end, even if there's something wrong in yeah, you, the back end. You, yeah, you can you can plug and play. Like if mm -hmm. one component is wrong, it is not. It might impact, but it is not going to pull the system entirely down. It, it for example, if your vendor module is wrong, only the things which is communicating in the vendor module, you might see a glitch, but the other things the customer can order the other products of um you can receive orders you can yes. do shifting you can change your themes and everything but in a non-headless system when a vendor module is failing the, the entire system would say like uh, page expired or uh website is gone uh -huh. and there's a problem uh -huh. there and something so headless e-commerce like and this is like a very lay lay layman definition but headless yes. would be also said like uh, you can remove a component, but the system with the components can be plugged remote. Uh, you can uh, take up the front end, you can take up the back end, and you can you can still make the system uh, work in bits and pieces. Uh, and you can add as many components as you want. And that's what an e-commerce that we are trying to build and deliver. So it's it's kind of an enterprise grade, definitely. Be, and you can like rely on that for next. Uh, if you start with us today, like you can at least rely on that particular infrastructure for next twenty years. Ah. Without, without having to change. Okay, so uh, uh, I don't mean like we can, we will be technologically stagnant. No, uh, mm -hmm. just adding to that point. Sorry, yeah, sorry for the interruption, uh, Tony. So like uh, the technological, I mean, twenty years would be uh, that we are not going to be stagnant on the existing technology, and uh, because technology is so much evolving. But what yes. we can do here is like uh, we can do here is like we can just um, evolve that smaller components and. Um, deliver to the people and then they would not even see a problem at all so scaling up so far i envision would be like okay that would be um that would be nicer people can uh use it more effectively like at least at least over a decade and a half or two decades and something like that and you can um, upgrade anything as you want it on the go so the, I, I mean this architecture is here for here to see i think like from 2005 yes. when i was researching on headless things 2005 amazon is on headless systems uh, the other yes. big retail giants were on e-commerce giants were on headless systems they have very sophisticated headless solutions where they plug in something and they plug out something they remove they throw it out and uh, all the big giants are looking for headless and that's how like again this ah. terminology that we adopted to develop was because of a very big re retail giant called reliance we have a reliance um, uh, communications in india uh, that's that's the that's one of the biggest communication chain i mean biggest business house in india actually they, uh -huh. they are the number one business house in india actually Mm -hmm. That's like how we can say Walmart. Walmart is not the number one, but 
in e-commerce they might they are they're the biggest retail store in the us but yeah. uh, in india like these guys are the biggest um, uh, business house like they are in yes. every business like petrochemical they are in e-commerce they are in retail they they do all the sorts of business so when mm -hmm. i say that like these guys came to me for like four years back and inquired about headless i was that was my head was spinning what does that mean by headless my yes when i, yes. Just, when I just put in my head like i was just spinning on my head like i don't know what is that like i was just researching i was reading <laughs> i couldn't like even even that that information couldn't be processing inside like and then again in the next six months there was one more lead that is coming to us like asking for headless e-commerce again that was spinning so i'm i learned that through these business houses which is bigger mm -hmm. houses and then slowly we started in uh, uh, to uh, get into that and did not come in all of a sudden but then yes uh, uh, it took a couple of years uh, for us to get us for that as a product and, and now um, it's taken over yeah taking over yeah and now we just speak that language every day like how mm -hmm. do you plug this in and how do you build that out like do you remove that component put that yes. over. so you don't have a definitive head like this is where the head is this is where the tail is so everything is yes. head like again you can operate one thing independent of the other so the communication flows in, yeah communication flows in our omnidirectional ways yeah David, can you talk us through one of your recent um, case studies in terms of, you know, conversion rates, um, online presence, return on investment? Uh, yeah, definitely. Like, um, uh, definitely. I'll, I'll put a story rather. Uh, uh, I'll put some uh, couple of uh, informations here. Mm. So, uh, uh, you, you, you wanted to know about the uh, conversion rate optimization and the return mm. on investment. Okay, and so conversion rate optimization is um, is something like uh, normally a business would look into after six months because uh, initially they the the I mean if there is an established business and then they start their e-commerce store they would start looking at that in the initial part yes. of the days itself, but then if the if they are just looking they want to put their store first and that's a different story. So let's go but uh, direct to the point of conversion rate optimization. So in conversion rate optimization when uh, if you have a, a page in the internet, like when when I, when mm -hmm. you have a page in your e-commerce store, so you definitely will drive traffic to that page. So you you might yes. push in people to that one from different geographies, different uh, countries, different languages. I mean, obviously, I mean, English language may not be uh, different, but uh, from different parts of the world. And when they are hitting the page, all these people would react in a different way. So yes. all these people, there would be like. CRO conversion rate optimization is something like uh, there is there, there is a definitive guide for what is the percentage of the conversion that a particular store has to give. Um, normally, it would range from two percentage to ten percentage on a retail business. Uh, so that if that is like two percentage to ten percentage, it's really good. But then again, it depends on the medium through which we drive the traffic from as well. So if you are driving traffic from Google Ads, you cannot expect two percentage. Um, uh, or Facebook, uh, I mean, Google Ads. And again, again, like, I cannot generalize Google Ads as such. If we are doing that Google Ads, and then, like, if we uh, are driving through, inside Google Ads, you have different campaigns, like display ads, yes. retargeting ads, you have got uh, search ads. So search ads would give you a better return on, I mean, better conversion uh, compared to display. Display would uh -huh. be, like, giving you 0 0.5 to 1 percentage or something less than that. Uh, retargeting ads would be again falling to less than uh, one percentage and these are these are the con normal standard conversion rates so when we benchmark these conversion rates for example two to ten percentage uh, for a store would be good but then uh, when you are pushing through the search ad it'd be like two percentage to three percentage or four percentage depending on that product and the traffic and the, the quality of the traffic and the geography we're pushing so the purchasing power has to be there for example if you say sell a hundred dollar product to an african market you, they don't have a, have a credit card then we we yes. don't we will never even see that's not uh, gonna work work but that if you, if we are pushing that australia or maybe us or europe um where they speak english so the conversion mm -hmm. rate would be pretty good like compared to that region so it is like st standard average like for, for or two to ten percentage so now coming back on um, the elements on the page the color on the page like the the, the everything matters the font the font yes. size Yes. So the, the, the yeah the font matters because like the font defines the character of the website, the font defines the uh, the authority of the website. So authority, uh, 
So if uh, if you you are an authoritative person in your space, like the font would speak on that. Way. So normally these shops would have you can you normally people can relate to this on a retail store which is non e-commerce thing when you go mm -hmm. to your uh, the bazaar like when you see an led light the, the big light board acp lights uh, the acrylic lights which is cut up on the store put up on the mm -hmm. store and versus the companies which has not got that, those lights these fonts would be bigger and they would drive bigger revenue as well food falls would be higher as well uh -huh. the big light boards big light boards uh, rather we can say they, they can be italics they can be on an italic letter they can be on a block letter or something like that but, but those fonts with uh, thick uh, lighting on them the attraction on them would drive traffic to their store so that is what it is driving so similarly in an e-commerce store if mm -hmm. your if your product name is uh, is in a different sim uh, if it is in a, in a, in a, in a font uh, that we have to identify. There are so many font families, Sans mm -hmm. families, there are Terry yes. families, yes. there are so many yes. families out of that. So we Lots. cannot know which family we have to adopt <laughs> for us. <laughs> for, uh, for, for, for a funny, I mean, uh, for, for an alcohol, it is a different uh, style of product. For, for an investment product, it is a different kind of a font that we have to adopt on. Yes. So it is a kind of different thing. Like for business, it is completely different. For each business, a font family has to be different. Um, uh, so uh, for, for 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 us, like in e-commerce, we we are adopting. We adopt Allegra Sans. It's a Sans family, and then like uh, a mix of Sans and Sherry family. So we adopt. We have seen some good improvement improvement in the conversion. So when you mm -hmm. see that font font in that place, so when you put a correct font in that place, and then the size of the font again, like if the font is like really nice, but the size uh, yes. uh is wrong then it distorts the whole thing and when your button uh, the color you, yeah. do you feel put that in a block way or you do you give that a stroke it depends on the geography so for example you if you have a product you better we can better uh give different landing pages for different geographies for example australian eastern region can have a different landing page for the same product but for the western region or the ah. coastal because these lifestyles the way that these people think the color that yes, they people put different. on their mind yes. are different yes. and the u.s east coast is different from the u.s west coast that is completely different east coast people are different in lifestyle the west coast people are completely it and techie and things they yes. want some different colors so the yes. west coast is like and the central part is like completely desertic area, desert. So these these desert region people would definitely have a different lifestyle, and their their colors yes. would be different. So, so like adopting to all these things, like if we do a, if we want to do an ad, so we can we can put all the A B testing A versus B versus C, which is which is that working, pick the right color, understand the people, the geography. Uh, what would that be that if I give them, they would be interested in what colors would please them, what colors would make mm -hmm. them uh, give give this uh, product a lift and I can send, send sell them. So these are non, uh, these doesn't consume us money except that money we put on the designer. Uh, but uh, then uh, this cost us a lot on the uh, investment side, the, the marketing side. Mm -hmm. So we, we have nailed this out, figured that out um, or perfectly laid the pathway to this one so this geography the Australian Western, Australian Western coast would be having uh, this is the color this is the layout I'm going to concentrate for this kind of people mm, definitely that works so that is a part of conversion rate optimization yes yes, yes. Um, yeah. then coming to the image part like some the, the conversion optimization on the image in the e-commerce page would be something uh, very important because uh, people do not have the product in their hand to feel and then mm. buy but yeah. mentally we would feel the product when we see something on the image so maybe our mental image a processing unit would definitely process the image and then that would sim to simulate us to buy that and if that image is not looking nice or if the image is not very clear or if that is very gassy and something is not yeah. good uh, we will lose on a com conversion as well there. So image and then put your put a video on there. So that matters. So in the header blog, in the in the in the top of the page itself, you have all these elements. So how your logo should be placed and where does your card button should be placed and mm -hmm. how long the search bar should be. Uh, and then the everything on a top of the page matters a lot. And that top of yes. the page, that part of the page which is presented to the people in the first uh, few seconds, first two to five seconds, really matters a lot because that is the first incident 
yeah uh, of them uh, they 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 they, they in, in, interact that's their first reaction first reaction if they see that page uh, perfectly well organized and these people in that particular geography would love them they mm -hmm. won't mind putting the credit card on the page and then say like bam that's yes. a sale that's going to happen so that is why uh, uh, a landing page is much easier to sell than a than a than a website so website yes. is a brochure website yes. is a brochure uh landing page is something very much a sales page like you give mm -hmm. one product you present it to the people that doesn't have mm -hmm. any that doesn't have any other information it's ex except the product so you will have a landing page you present to the people you create an offer over there mm -hmm. uh you 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 create an offer you put a, value, a lot of value to the product then you present the product to the people they if they, they find the value of the product is um less i mean if the offer is like it's exciting for them and the value is more than the offer that we make for the product mm -hmm. the sales is definitely made out there so yeah. the, finally the landing page is what it is going to also add up to the conversion rate so the conversion rate optimization we can speak when we take up the analytics dashboard and uh, present it to the people like there are the it might be good but i think on um it, it, it also adds to a lot of uh, you go really deep really way deeper into that one and say like that that would be like a classroom uh, session <laughs> so yeah. i would just rather say a story yeah. here like this yeah. So the image, the text, the fonts, and the buttons, the add to cart button, the that thing, and the reviews where that has to be. Those things has to be given a thought. And different, it differs for different businesses as well. David, when we're talking about um, e-commerce platform form, uh, platforms and uh, solutions and architecture, how long does it take? Now, I know that's a difficult question because obviously you have simple e-commerce and you have complex e-commerce solutions. But generally speaking, how quickly can you build an e-commerce solution for a company or a business? Okay, uh, so um, technically, uh, I mean, technology has em uh, empowered us to uh, I mean, we are meeting like again. This is what I spoke last week as well. Like, yeah, we yeah. Uh, technological enablement has brought Australia, India, and US like on the same time in the same. We we just speak face to face here, so it's, yes, it is with the same speed. Like the deployment hand can be had for the e-commerce as well. Technology is so enabling people that they can think anything right now, and the next day they can have that put up. Um, but I'm sorry for you. Like you have asked me like a couple of times for this e-commerce, <laughs> and <laughs> you'll 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 never come back to me after this call and say like, David, I've asked this and you answered. <laughs> you call it, you drink of an eye. I know it's coming. <laughs> I know it's coming. I know. <laughs> it's only yeah. I'm only thinking about it today because we're talking about e-commerce and and for business, it's really important to have an e-commerce solution and it doesn't uh, you know for many people they just think that's about products but it, it equally works for services and for consultants and that can fall into the e-commerce uh bracket as well can't it yeah so service uh, e-commerce is for everything like e-commerce is just yeah. like you you collect payments on an online uh, online medium so that is what like electronic commerce you 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 commerce you're trading something there mm -hmm. so it can be a product you you can trade a product you can trade a service you can trade a consultation you can trade anything literally that we wanted to do that yeah so uh, trading up uh, I mean it is trading like your you platform can help you trade anything that you wanted so mm -hmm. there is um, not not just we can say like I I just have to sell some product if you if you're consulting something like uh, and if you want your when you're consulting, you write books and you have yes. a lot of that things. You can put that and and then say like you can put a landing page in the e-commerce and say like mm -hmm. I'm I'm a consultant here, so yeah. I I'm a guest speaker. I speak here. I mean my conversion. Yes. I help people to achieve this and this and this. So this is my package. You can book the package here and yeah. Uh, so that that can be an e-commerce as well. That can also be termed as an e-commerce because uh, that's again a trading. You trade something. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So there and when deployment so you asked me the previous question i told you in a very brief way so we what it can be like really um really faster because what we have yeah. enabled out here is like i mean it differs for different companies but what we uh, have enabled is like we wanted to eliminate most of the human work uh, that is involved in getting you the store so yeah. 
yeah. I don't want to have a, I just, uh, those sub, that, that has to be diverted to supporting you. Mm. So it, it has to be like, uh, if you ask for a store in the next um, few minutes, I should be able to give you a store, like a few minutes. It should That's be less cool. Than- that's cool so uh, people listening can actually ring you david and go hey i want that e-commerce yeah. i want that store and i want it in 24 hours and you'll go yes right away <laughs> all right away, yeah so we, we have created an automation like you yeah. have to put in email you have to put in your email your for uh, your name the business name and just it it starts spinning up and this headless this is headless e-commerce by the way that's amazing it's not a standard static e-commerce solution that we uh, give uh, the clients here. So it's headless completely. You can scale on that. Anything you can connect the APIs. You can, you if you want, you can get the APIs from our, uh, from us. You can connect anything that you wanted uh, mm-hmm. on on the world. Like if you believe this is going to change something, that if you believe like you want to connect uh, something uh, that will change uh, the way that you operate, you can do that. Like we can give the API, for example. Uh, we are speaking here in Zoom. If you want to connect the Zoom API to the e-commerce store, you can put that, plug the API of Zoom to uh, e-commerce. So we can give that one as well. So that is there. Wow. The communication is there. It's your idea, like how do you want to execute that? So if you have a lot of ideas, if you have a crazy idea to change that, we have a connection. Oh, I always have crazy ideas. <laughs> there will be more. There will be more coming, David. Just I'm trying to just yeah. no, 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 grow slowly. <laughs> We have a lot of them, but it's not just you. Like I'm just telling, generalizing. Yes, yes. Including me as well. If I'm having yes. a crazy idea in e-commerce, I yes. can do a lot of things here. Yeah, David, so we are almost out of time. Um, and I had a few more questions, but we're not going to get to those. Mm-hmm. I actually want you to tell people the best way to connect with you because y- you've got so many solutions for helping business across a whole range of things. And we will get to those in the upcoming series of shows. But what's the best way to connect with you and the team at WebNexus? Yeah, um, they can they can uh, drop just they can drop an email from their mobile phone. Um, yeah. and they can do that uh, to sales at the rate WebNexus dot com or dot co mm-hmm. so we have yes. both the so uh dot com or dot co they can they can send an email to that and it will come to us and in the next one to two hours like there will be somebody who is fast assisting response them. Yeah, i agree want, yeah if they wanted to be uh helping them on the on their whatsapp they can they can put their whatsapp on the uh, email as well and there will be yes. somebody sitting back uh from here like they would connect with them and uh, that's right uh, yeah, we have a few team and members. And answer on. questions and and let them know how you can help. Yeah, normally it would not be a sales process. Like we, what we, no. what I You want to find out what what they out. want. Yeah. So it's like consultation, basically yes. consultation. If you want an e-commerce store, like I wanted to consult with you first and say if your idea is correct and collect that idea and present. Uh, I mean, they'll come back to the team and they will do some discussions out there yes. this is this idea would that would it would our product be available well? we just want not to take the money from somebody like we, we don't really like Agreed. That because, uh, Agreed. That, yeah that wouldn't take you so long because money we need money every single month every single day every mm-hmm. single hour from there mm-hmm. nobody can give us the money without we providing the value to them back yes. so, so if there is something that they consult with them and if that is a, there is a common common ground achieved, then you can just mm. do that. You can you can go to that. Go there, David, go there. thank you so much. I just have to cure, have to just let you know. Um, I have um, Basecamp, which is the way that the team, my team, communicate with David's team, WebNexus. And just as we're finishing this this episode, there's like four notifications popped up, so I know all the time wow. that David's team is talking to my team and they're doing things. And my, I might get not check until the end of the day, but that's how responsive WebNexus is is when you're working directly with them. David, we are completely out of time. I've overrun our shot today. I am really grateful to um, do these shows with you and ask you all the weird and wonderful questions that apply to the amazing technology that's at our fingertips that can make business and company life better. David, thank you so much. Um, I look forward to joining you again next week where we'll have another conversation about something else that WebNexus provides for its global clients. David, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Tony, for the time and everything. Like, 
exploring so many options like i mean which is hidden inside web nexus you're just a great explorer <laughs> uh i i love what I, like i said we've only got eight shows and i'm thinking how can i get through all this amazing stuff that web nexus does in our shows but we will i promise and on that note i must say we need to go we will see you all please tune in next week for another episode with david and i talking web nexus and the amazing solutions they provide for their global clients that's it for this week see you next week bye for now bye bye thank you Well, David and I, we can just keep talking if you like. <laughs> yeah. The guys have gone to sleep. It's late in the US. It's only you yeah, and me yeah. left. 11 30. Yeah, 11 30. <laughs> <laughs> I've still got questions I can ask. Yeah, um, you, you, you ask that. Like, uh, I think they are recording it and this will be helpful for the people as well. I know, because I was going to ask you about APIs. Now, oh, wow. um, yeah, because I, <laughs> my husband's a programmer, by the way, um, and I hear him talking about APIs. Now, I'm not going to ask him technological questions, but I'm going to ask you since the guys haven't cut us off yet. Yeah. Yeah, please. Uh, I think... Uh, we might I... just have to cut ourselves off and hope that everything's okay in Texas. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. We will leave it this time, um, audience. We're going to cut ourselves off from uh, the team in Texas. Please join us next week. We'll have another one, one conversation with David. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Thank you, Tony.